Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Mr. J. And today I will be going over all of the patch notes. Every single thing in this ginormous patch update that we just got for Outriders. This patch was freaking huge. So I know this video is going to be really long, but I will try my best to put some video timestamps in the description down below. So that way you guys can actually jump between some things or actually on the bar itself, you'll have chapters to jump between. This is insane. Uh, stick around for more of my build videos. Now that we have all these changes, builds are going to change. This was a huge meta changing update. So if you guys are new here, first of all, thank you very much for stopping by. If you guys want to hit that subscribe button before you guys leave, that'd be freaking awesome. And if you guys are new here, I do try to post as much content on this game and other games as I can. And if you would not mind dropping a like on this video, I spent a lot of time trimming this video down, trying to get it as, as short and concise and recording everything. This was a lot of work to get this video out for you guys as soon as possible. So if you guys would want to drop a like on it, that'd be awesome as well. And if you guys want to come hang out with me on Twitch while we do some build testing and things like that, testing out some of these new mechanics and testing out some of the things that they changed in this game, my link will be in the description down below for my Twitch channel. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in into all of these freaking patch notes. Okay, so these apparently are huge patch notes on Steam. I think I saw a 15 gigabyte update on Steam, somewhere like that. So holy crap, patch notes time. So this is the... I don't know what version number this is, but uh, we got patch notes. So patch notes say item locking is added. Quick mark is improved. Ooh, that's good. Uh, apocalypse tier grind reduced. No way. What? Apocalypse tier grind reduced. Crafting costs reduced. Wait, is that like upgrades and stuff? Resource gains increased. Expedition rewards improved. Balance changes 80% buffs and bug fixes. Oh my god. Wow. That's a that's a great little summary there already. Wow. So the patch notes spans two two announcements as they are too long to be contained in <laughs> in a single one. Uh, this thread covers general changes and bug fixes. You can find the changes regarding to the game balance in this thread. Let's open that up for later. Okay, okay, here we go. Uh, quality of life changes, patch highlight, new feature, item locking. Hold it to lock it. Oh, you can lock things now. You can lock it. So they implemented item locking functionality. They improved the quick mark functionality to now also include legendary, apocalypse epic, and apocalypse legendary rarities. Uh, they changed the behavior of the camera when sprinting to make the sprinting behavior between toggle and hold the sprint consistent. The camera will no longer turn when players are sprinting. Wait. Huh? That sounds awesome. I don't know what that exactly means, but I'm glad they're looking into... I'm glad... Sure, that is fantastic. I don't even know, fully know what that means, but this is something that I've wanted them to do is to truly look into the little things. I don't know what that even means, but that's something that, like, I don't know anybody asking for that, and they were looking into it anyway, which is fantastic. Uh, so the end game changes. You have patch highlight, apocalypse tier grind is reduced. So getting 40 should not be a slog fest of 200 hours or whatever it is. So apocalypse tier leveling, starting from apocalypse tier 20, the requirement to level up each apocalypse tier has been reduced by 10%. Is that a stacking 10% <laughs> or just 10%? Uh, if it's a stacking 10%, that'd be great. But because that'd be, that'd be fantastic. But 10% still better than no percent. So yeah, 10% reduction on that's pretty good. Crafting resources uh, cost is reduced and the resource gains are increased. So the resources and anomaly extract, the amount of anomaly extract gained has generally been improved and the amount of anomaly extract gained in Tari Gratar's Troves has been increased by 500%. 500% is a lot of percentages, guys. Wow. So that, I mean, I guess that means uh, Troves are going to be huge for people that are trying to farm the, uh, like, the anomaly extract. 
A full run through of, of, of Taria Gratar, including Trove, should now net out around double the amount of anomaly extract earned per run when compared to before this patch. Good to know. Uh, boss rushing the final Arbiter will net slightly more anomaly extract than before, but this will not be the most efficient route for anomaly extract farming. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, so crafting and upgrading, starting at item level 50, the anomaly extract cost required to upgrade gear has been reduced by 5%. 5 per- okay. Uh, between the two above changes, increased gains and reduced costs, players should be able to support upgrading two full sets of gear per apocalypse level. Uh, this should enable a greater amount of exper or experimentations and limit the need to hoard resources in order to be able to upgrade the current equipped set. So they reduced anomaly costs by 5% uh, starting at level 50. Hopefully that's a starting amount of 5% at 50. Just like up here, hopefully it's a it's a starting amount of 10% at level at tier 20. Because uh, that would be... I feel like those are extremely low values. But hopefully it's a starting amount. So Apocalypse Gear Drop Rate. Starting at Apocalypse Tier 11, the increased chance for Apocalypse uh, Variant Gear has been increased for each Apocalypse Tier. They don't tell you for what, but they just say it's been increased. Now we've got Expedition Rewards are improved. So the Expedition Rewards have been increased in order to make expedition uh, Expeditions feel more viable alongside Taria Gratar. The loot gained per X time investment should now feel quite similar to uh, between Expeditions and Taria Gratar, which is good. So then you can farm both and still feel like you're actually making progress in the game. Players should now receive a greater amount of epic and legendary items, comparatively fewer rare items and Expeditions. Finally! Oh, it was like half blues before. And then Anomaly Extract Farming should now also feel much more viable to do in Expeditions, which is good. That's fantastic. Uh, which it was already decent before. It's just now even more better. Um, so bug fixes, huh? Then they show us tricks there because it's a bug. Okay. So bug fixes. Progression related bugs. They fixed a bug that allowed players to miss a PAX point if they transitioned out of the fisherman too quickly. Oh, damn. That would suck. Although you could just replay the story point anyway, so it wouldn't be that bad. Uh, they fixed a bug that prevented characters from transferring to World Slayer uh, from obtaining their first ascension point. They also fixed a bug that could prevent co-op players from leveling up even if they had acquired all the required experience, but the party had been wiped out during combat. Yeah, that was that was annoying. Fixed a bug that caused players' health to be uh, improperly calculated if they leveled up immediately after dying. The correct value would be displayed if they died again. Awesome. Okay. Okay. <gasps> hey, look at that. It's the trickster packs tree. What are they going to fix? What are, they, what are you going to fix? <laughs> oh my god. Fixed a bug that was causing the twisted rounds and volcanic rounds blighted round skills to be blocked when firing any one-shot weapon. Wait, you couldn't activate... Wait, that was a thing? That was a thing? You couldn't use the, the anomaly rounds skills with a one-shot weapon? What? Dude, one-shot weapons just got insane if that's what that means. Fixed a bug that prevented the mods Minefield and Legendary Minefield from triggering more than once per enemy. Oh, I was noticing that actually. Okay, okay, here we go. So Devastator fixed a bug that prevented the Devastator's PAX node, Finishing Touch, and Earthen Shell from properly working after the player transitioned from a uh, no weapons area. That is very good. Those are very good. Earthen Shell is the, is the shield one uh, that lets you earn your shield back. Uh, for skill damage, so it'd be nice to maintain my shield after going from a no weapons area. Which they couldn't call it like a safe zone, they just don't have a name for it, they just called it no weapons area. Okay, uh, Technomancer fixed a bug that prevented Technomancers from activating the pain launcher skill if they were too close to cover or walls. That's a good one. <laughs> That's a, like, sorry, you don't have enough room to pull out this giant rocket launcher from your butt. Uh, fixed a bug that prevented Technomancers from cycling between camera sides when using the Tools of Destruction minigun. Huh. Yeah, that'd be nice to be able to switch shoulders. Uh, they fixed a bug that caused the stat screen for or, of Technomancer to display abnormal results while the Tools of Destruction skill is active. Coolio. Apparently the Tools of Destruction and Pain Launcher stuff was just bugged. So there you guys go. There's all your awesome stuff over there. Trickster. 
Fixed a bug that prevented the Trickster's Hunt the Prey skill from triggering if the enemies were using cover. If this, if this fix goes through, because they've said they fixed it before, and it didn't work. So if that fix goes through, oh my god, thank you. Oh, thank you so much. If that fix goes through, that's going to be fantastic. Fixed a bug that caused tricksters to lock up if they used hunt the prey on an enemy who died at the same time. Thank you. Ah. Oh my god, thank you. Fixed a bug that could cause tricksters to get stuck in geometry on certain levels when using hunt the prey. Again, thank you. Fixed a bug that could cause the trickster's twisted round skill to remain active indefinitely if the player was staggered during the reload animation. I did not experience that, but that sounds like a fun time. <laughs> uh, fixed a bug that was causing the Venator's Knife skill to deal inconsistent damage when used in combination with certain mods. Okay, I gotta try that out because I don't know what that exactly means, but they don't say what mods, they just say in certain mods, but yay. Uh, fixed a bug that caused the Time Rift mod, Weightlessness, to show the incorrect duration of 5 seconds in its tooltip. The correct value is 3 seconds, which is now correctly displayed. So, not exactly a nerf, but, because it, 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 it was displaying the incorrect value, but, dang. No, dang. <laughs> I was kind of hoping they would take it from 3 seconds to 5, like just keeping it at 5. That'd be nice. Okay. Bug fixes on gear. Okay. Uh, fixed a bug that prevented the Technomancer's Grim Inventor set bonus from triggering consistently in combination with the Pain Launcher skill if there was no- if there was only one rocket remaining in the RPG. That's very good. Glad they fixed that. Uh, fixed a bug that was causing status power provided by items to be multiplied instead of decreased as players, uh, increase their Apocalypse tiers. This could in unintentionally lead to, uh, increases as high as 700% status power at Apocalypse tier 40. Wow. Uh, fixed a bug that prevented the mycologist set from being or from behaving properly in the transmog menus. Oh, well, there you go. Fixed a bug that allowed the game to drop a headgear item called Wraith's Mask for which there is no transmog design. So I'm assuming you added a transmog design. That's what that says, I think. Bug fixing mods. So fixed a bug that caused the shock and awe mod to trigger more often than intended. Okay, that mod... I never really used that mod. I didn't see a use for it. But yay, at least it's fixed, I guess. Fixed a bug that caused the Relativity Theorem mod to uh, inconsistently refresh in some cases, even extend cooldown. Oh, that was the... Oh, oh, wow. I just, that clicked with my brain what that says. Yeah, that's a good one. That's, that's a good one. Uh, do, you don't want to extend the cooldowns on a mod that's supposed to reduce your cooldowns by 10%. <laughs> So they also fixed a bug that caused the Untamed Power mod to skip the cooldown for Trickster's Hunt the Prey skill. Oh, so you could just repeatedly hunt the prey something and get Untamed Power to work? That's hilarious. Fixed a bug that prevented the Pyromancer's Ember Shield from triggering more than one stack of uh, if the player had the skill node Master of the Resistance active. You Pyros will have to tell me what the hell that means. I've literally not opened up my Pyro in this update, so RIP Pyros? Maybe yay pyros? I'm not sure. I have no idea. Uh, fixed a bug that prevented the tricksters and another one armor mod from not functioning uh, uh, for killing shots. Hmm. Well, it's an armor mod. I don't. I don't know what that one does, but I mean, yay! They fixed it. A lot of these bug fixes I don't actually know of. I did. I didn't experience these. I don't think I use a lot of these mods. Uh, fixed a bug that prevented the Devastator's Reflect Bullet mod Equator from working in re uh, relation to melee- Oh my god! Huh! <laughs> they might have just fixed the Equator mod! We just tested that one out like, what was it, yesterday? The day before? Like, I held up the, the Reflect Bullet's shield while using the Equator mod, and it just did nothing. Like, the- like, most of the melee enemies did not give a crap about me using this Reflect Bullet's. Like, heck, the boss didn't care about me using the Equator mod. It did it did zero damage to the boss, so that's kind of cool. That'll be fun to mess around with now. Uh, fixed a bug that prevented the Concussive Force mod from increasing the damage dealt by the Devastator's chip off the old block. Wow, <gasps> that was supposed to work with chip off the old block. <gasps> My melee build just got even better. My melee build just got even better. My chip off the old block can now do 25, what is it, 25% more damage and a 50% bigger radius. <gasps> That's awesome. 
<laughs> That's fantastic. Fixed a bug that caused a self-medication mod to fully restore player's health every time it triggered. So, uh... <laughs> so, R.I.P. the invincible devastators that pushed Q once and were full health. Uh, they implemented changes to the death ray mods VFX, so the mod effect is no er, uh, is not overly bright in certain areas. Ah, so they just adjusted the bloom values in that area. Nice. So bug fixes on the enemies. Okay, okay. Here, that this is kind of a big one. Okay, fixed a bug that could cause enemies from being properly affected by or not animating and despawning properly when hit with either Devastator's Impale and Earthquake, Pyromancer's Feed the Flames and Overheat, or Technomancer's Cold Snap or Cryo Turret skill while the enemy was affected by the Phoenix Aura effect. Interesting. Well, that's a, that's a pretty good one to have. Fixed a bug that caused Skirmisher Warlords to appear on the trial of Targetar's score screen multiple times. <laughs> I did notice that. Uh, fixed a bug that could cause the Arbiter to be locked in a melee attack loop if the player targeted them with Hunt the Prey skill at the certain moment. Yeah, I noticed that. That was annoying. Playing a tr Doing a solo trickster run of the trial, like, if you were on an Arbiter boss and you Hunt the Prey to them, they would just do like nine swings in a row repeatedly, never stopping, and it was so annoying. It was so stupid. <laughs> so I'm glad they fixed that. Fixed a bug that allowed players to interrupt adherent enemy abilities with regular weapon shots. Fixed a bug that allowed players to enter cover when affected by the executioner's chain lock ability. Oh, so a little, a little tiny, uh, like story fix. Uh, improved the consistency of the shadow beast's melee attack in relation to the claw VFX. Good to know. So we'll actually get realistic or more uh, accurate claw attacks from them. Fixed a bug that was causing co-op players to be momentarily held back if uh, if hit by a forest Strix projectile. Good to know. Fixed a bug that allowed uh, vanquisher enemies to rotate while executing the su suppressive fire skill. Which enemies are the vanquisher ones? <laughs> it's my response to that. Fixed a bug that caused snow behemoths to become idle if their rock plower skill was avoided by devastators using gravity leap skill. <laughs> Okay, that's a fun one. Uh, fixed a bug that could cause enemies to be stuck in an animation loop by players using the Concentration Blast mod or Pyros using the Overheat skill. Okay then, that's a good one. Animation uh, loops are not fun. Fixed a bug that prevented the crawler in the Cliffside Path arena from moving away from its spawn location. Ah, that must have been like a rare bug because I've never seen the crawlers not move out of their spawn door. Hmm. All right, so then we've got uh, fixed multiple bugs that prevented melee enemies from reaching players in certain locations, which is, you know, that's a good one to have. Your melee enemy should be able to reach us at the very least. We shouldn't cheese them all the time. Multiple improvements to make the VFX of enemy abilities more consistently timed with their effects, which is good. This is the stuff this game needs. This is the thing that this game needs to do is it needs to work on those little tiny things of like remember i keep saying animations animations are huge in this game that need to be tweaked and worked on so these tiny little adjustments they're doing are amazing i like to see these Ooh, bug fixes for general fixes awesome fixed a bug that uh that reset auto loot filter settings after returning to gameplay from the lobby i didn't experience that but i'm glad they fixed that Fixed a bug that caused World Slayer and Apocalypse gear to appear in Tiago's rotation for players who had not upgraded to World Slayer. That's probably accurate and should be half. Okay, there you go. Fixed a bug that caused client players to see an incorrect number of retries remaining for the trial of Tari Guitar when exiting to lobby and, con and using continue. That is very helpful. So that way, all players in a lobby see the total number of tries accurately. Whereas mine would be like two all the other players would see three, so they would think we had another try when we didn't. That's good. Uh, fixed a bug that was causing armor worn by the players to jitter and jump in multiplayer. Oh, they fixed that! See, this is what I'm talking about. These little tiny things. We all we saw that on stream like two weeks ago or whatever. Back at launch, our armor was just like jumping and jittering and being all weird, and they fixed it. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for doing that. I appreciate these small little fixes. These are great to read. Like, they might not be game-breaking bugs or whatever, but they are good to read. Thank you for adding these. 
Uh, resolve. So I just wanted issues. to jump in good, here good and kind of there. summarize resolve what they were talking about with this preamble real quick. Okay, good to know. There you go. It's a long, Implemented lengthy multiple post improvements that takes and a lot of time to read. And the to light overall and gist good. of what they were actually saying uh, is to just that FPS the patch observed. notes from today, they took a lot of time to carefully consider many options, many different choices that they had available. That's all I really need. But before they took any of these, 60, but these if they steps just take that towards addressing any dip issues like 60, or balance changes, fantastic. they wanted to really take Multiple a look at each individual to audio patch and sound note effects for each not class or not properly and editing. compare oh, that's awesome. which That'll nodes the game feel are being more polished over uh, others. Consistent. So on Multiple some classes, to you have a 40 or 60% chance that people are going to pick items. these nodes okay. over if some other nodes in that same class only have like a 1% chance that people are going to pick them. So on the Pyro, you might have a node that only one stuff that they had player base has actually Fantastic. chosen whereas you might Multiple have other nodes that 40 to 60 percent of players okay. are choosing that because Various it is the other only go-to node crash fixes, to actually is, deal okay. damage or whatever so node setup you have thread. in the back tree the for the most op uh, meta builds do those one. are the ones they were looking at so this is and the, the ones that are picked changes. the least are the ones uh, they are the looking to uh, balance okay. so their Pre entire philosophy here was to see the ones that are picked the most and maybe tune them down just a little bit and then bring up the lower end ones to make everything on the same playing field. So while there might be nerfs in this patch notes, there's not going to be a huge amount of like, you know, devastating changes. But one thing that they have mentioned here is that out of all of the classes, they mention that the trickster is probably the most, as they called it, balanced overall class because most of the nodes were seeing an average of 25% pick rate, meaning that people who play Trickster were kind of all over the place and there was no one set of builds or one set way to play a Trickster. Now, I personally still think that Tricksters are the weakest class, regardless of whatever Shield Beast AR build people are using. I think Tricksters need to be adjusted and balanced further in the future. I think there's a lot of things that we need to get on Tricksters to be comparable to other classes in the, uh like damage per second, damage per minute, whatever damage per hit, whatever whatever metric you are using to judge your classes, I think Trickster still falls behind in most of those except for that one build which is the Shield Beast. So the goal for this update they're saying here is that it uh, they're trying to take the underperforming nodes that people are not actually taking, the unchecked, the unutilized ones, and they want to buff those ones up so that way they become an actual worthwhile node that people would want to check out and want to make a build around and at the same time they want to take those really top tier ones and maybe tune them down just a little bit so that way uh, you have more of an incentive to check out more things around you so that way you know like if something is incredibly OP you tone that down and bring the other things up so that we have more things to look at more of a, an incentive to try them out. So that is pretty much the entire preamble here. It's a lot to read. It's a lot to understand, but that's pretty much the overall gist of what they were saying here. I will leave it up on screen for you guys to pause so you guys can actually read it if you guys would like to read the specifics of what they say here. It is a good read to understand where they were coming from with this patch. But without further ado, let's continue on to the next part of the patch notes.
Okay. So they have the general balance changes. We read that. All the anomaly changes. We read that stuff. Okay. Balance changes to the Devastator. Uh, Earthen Shell added a 0.5 second cooldown. Note that due, uh, due to a display rounding quirk in the engine, this cooldown will be displayed as being one second. It is, however, 0.5 seconds in actuality. Aha! See, I knew that was going to be one of their things. Is they added a small cooldown to how often the earthen shell node would actually trigger because it was triggering on every single damage proc ever. Like all bleed, all melee, all of your earthquakes, all of your gravity leaps, all of your impales, everything was triggering it. So a, a 0.5 second cooldown, yeah, that, that we'll see how that feels. We gotta, yeah. But they greatly increased the shield generation values. Hmm. Okay, okay. Because that'll, that'll, probably, that'll probably balance that out. You get more shield, but there's a cooldown. So you might even feel the exact same. I don't know. Maybe with like a slight decrease. Uh, Earthen Shell has been identified as being slightly too strong. So we're applying a brief cooldown to the shield generation that was being abused through excessive animation canceling. This will give some uh, enemies a little more opportunity to be able to damage Devastators who were otherwise immortal. <laughs> Uh, we have compensated the, Im uh, the implementation of the cooldown with an increased shield generation per skill used so that earthen shell will still provide great value but without the potential or without the uh, without the potential for abuse right i mean that makes sense i knew that was going to happen multi-strike stored damage now capped at 700 percent anomaly power wasn't this the thing that allowed mods or not mods uh skills to one-shot bosses so that's good uh, Multi-Strike's untamed potency has been a topic of discussion since the launch of World, uh, World Slayer. In an attempt to not completely gut its numbers, we have applied a cap to, uh, to add a movable through anomaly power ceiling to the node. Uh, Terms of Engagement is also now capped at 700% anomaly power. Much like Multi-Strike, Terms of Engagement suffered from a bug that allowed players to store up an unlimited amount of damage and then release it in one hit. Yes, that's, yeah and, and uh, release it as a one-hit kill against any enemy in the entire game, including bosses. Our approach has been the same as with Multi-Strike, whereby we applied a cap to the total uh, total amount of damage these nodes can store. There we go. Uh, finishing Touch, the in increase the ammo to weapon damage coefficient provided by this node. As part of our drive to make firepower devastators more viable, we are increasing the, con uh, the conversion of missing ammo to weapon damage by upping the value to more than its previous one-to-one -one relation. What's the relation now? This is where you should have said, instead of a one-to-one, -one, it's like a two-to-one. Or like a 1.2 to one, or 1 1.6 to one. What's the new ratio? Uh, impact point. They increase the damage scaling from 30% to 50% of anomaly power. Uh, this buff forms part of the overall power shift this patch is introducing for Devastators. The overall aim is to move the Devastator meta uh, away from away from its current form and instead open new multiple uh, yeah open up multiple new viable options for play. Okay, I don't know what I don't know what impact point actually is anymore. Uh, Obliteration increased the base anomaly power and resistance piercing from six percent to ten. Obliteration is being buffed to make it a more competitive choice when considered against Puncture. Uh, this buff forms part uh, of the overall power shift this patch is introducing for Devastators. Oh, it's just they copied the same part. Upheaval. Increase the percentage stored of damage from 10% to 15%. They fixed a couple of bugs that caused the Devastators Upheaval Packs node to act in unexpected and inconsistent ways, such as acting differently when triggered by the Impale skill. So as we have applied a cap to multi-strike and a bug fix, uh, will now make upheaval only store the active or the activating player's own damage, uh, as was always intended. We are increasing the amount of stored damage as part of the overall Devastator's power shift. Cool. Elitism fixed a bug that prevented the Devastator's packs node elitism from correctly working on bosses. Oh well, that's fantastic. Reduce the cooldown on elitism from five seconds to one second. There you go. Look at that. The bug fix supported the node's uh, core purpose, providing the power or providing power when fighting elite uh, enemies and bosses. However, during our analysis of elitism's usage and behavior, we identified that its previous uptime was clocked at around 50% at best. Reducing its cooldown should allow players to maintain elitism almost perpetually when fighting elites and bosses. Frickin' heck yeah! Uh, let's see. Boop 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 boop. 
Um, let's see. Overwhelming Force. Increased armor to damage conversion from 40 to 60%. Okay, there you go. Overwhelming Force's conversion is being buffed in order to incite more players into trying playstyles it supports while also providing a competitive synergy between this PAX node and changes we have made to some Devastator's legendary sets. Cool, cool, cool. Paladin. Uh, removed the protection keyword requirement and changed both nodes to activate on any skill. Oh, uh, what? Wait, wait. wasn't Paladin the one that gave you like a 45% anomaly power boost when you activated a protection skill? Do you just get a 45% anomaly power boost on any skill now? What the dude, is that, what? Holy crap, dude. After long discussions, we came to the conclusion that in order to truly unlock Devastator build variety, we had to remove the hindering factor of protection keyword on both of these multiplying nodes. Yes. This change is part of our overall power shift of... Okay, cool. Yes, that. Uh, Mighty Tank. Increase the percentage cap from 40% to 50% for both Anomaly Power and Fire Power. We are raising the ceiling of Warded Devastator so that way you can reap more benefits from fully committing to armor stacking. There you go. Look at that. Despair. Ooh, a despair change. They reduce the percentage of its anomaly damage multiplier from 100% to 30. So it's no longer a doubling. It's no longer a double damage. Interesting. Uh, despair empowered gravity leap has dominated the Devastator meta as an omni tool since World Slayer launched. Uh, it has providing or it has providing. It was providing both inconsistent survivability and damage debuffs while also being a powerful gap closer. Uh, while the survivability is a unique characteristic of Gravity Leap, with World Slayer we wanted or we introduced a seismic solution to debuff mods. At the same time we equalized them across the board to 30%, but Despair was the single outlier. This led to the anomaly power devastator meta becoming extremely static with most of the dominant build continuing to be Leap Quake. Uh, as it already was during the base game's life cycle. This was uh, the result of being able to access both the old Paladin node and Despair at the same time and acquire effects that uh, the other build uh, permu permutations could not achieve. Today's change removes the must-have nature of Gravity Leap, allowing it to be traded with other skills that can provide a comparable buff or debuff. Uh, coupled with Unshackled, Paladin should greatly expand the Devastator's build variety. Um, okay, so Bullet Acceleration increased the base damage from 33 to 60. Uh, with Paladin Champion Unshackled from the Protection Keyword, uh, we are keen to add offensive value to reflect bullets. So that is now, or so that it's not lost an abandoned skill, this should now give players incentive to keep the skill for its full duration. Coolio. So they almost doubled the entire uh, damage of it. The strongest fist increased damage to the enemy within the with the highest HP from 50 to 75%. Ooh. Ooh. Primal Chain. Increase the damage provided by Primal Chain mod from 10 to 15%. This change will provide an extra nudge up for anomaly power builds, focusing on the Boulder Dash skill to make them more viable given the nature of the skill and within the context of the terms of engagement being capped. Okay. Banner Lord set. Added extra functionality that provided that provides 35% anomaly power boost. Look at that! Awesome. Uh, fundamental changes made to any gear pieces may not apply to existing items uh, due to the way the game spawns and stores loot. Any newly dropped gear piece, you will basically just have to re-farm for your gear again if they change any of your legendary set pieces. Uh, so the Seismic Commander set has long been the dominant Devastator pick due to its multipliers. Required skill sets and its effective values concerning cooldown reduction when compared against damage multipliers. Uh, giving the Banner Lord set extra anomaly power should it help make it more competitive against Seismic Commander set. Maybe. Increased both percentages of shared physical anomaly damage from 30% to 50% of the martial stuff. Awesome. As mentioned in the Banner Lord explanation, the Seismic set is too powerful or is too much of a powerful all-rounder, which prevents other sets from being considered viable. Okay. Hmm. Awesome. So they're just trying to make other sets actually stand out. Concussioner's set. Primary attribute switched to bonus firepower? They switched the primary attribute of the concussioner's set to bonus firepower? Well, that's... odd. Okay. You know, 
the concussion reset piece is all about melee damage. It's not like melee damage requires anomaly power or anything like that. No, let's make it bonus firepower to make the set completely useless now. Thanks. The secondary attributes uh, switch to contain close range damage and status power. Why? Why? You're making it a firepower set when the set bonus is friggin' melee? Why? Do you know how your own set pieces work? You do up here. What the? Why? Why do you hate melee? Ugh. Why do they hate melee? Uh, fundamental changes made to any gear piece may not apply. Okay, cool, whatever. Okay, explanation. The concussioner set suffered from a severe case of identity crisis. <laughs> the set was initially designed as an anomaly power bruiser, but progression layers within certain PAX nodes were not cooperating with the set's premise. We have decided to shift the set to support firepower builds in the same way the deathproof set might. For both of these sets, damage is generated primarily for from armor stacking and the set bonuses effect. This change for the concussioner set should also unlock better synergy with pack nodes through the overwhelming force path. What? I don't know. I I don't know. I Moving on. <laughs> uh, statue's leg slot. The items now provide bonus firepower instead of max health. Yay! Yay! So, less max health, more bonus firepower for that set. It's fine. That's fine. That's fantastic. Uh, they rolled out changes to attributes for legendary sets to make them more coherent and appealing to players. This change is the finishing touch of those efforts. Freaking what is this what is that is my takeaway from from the devastator set what is this all of that was fine until we got to this we'll have to see how that i gotta wait for testing i guess but this on paper sounds uh we'll say it sounds not smart on paper uh technomancer so lethal devices, they added a 0.2 second cooldown to the node's secondary effect. So lethal devices secondary effect was fairly overwhelming uh, when used in, in a few builds that capitalize on excessive amounts of damage events occurring within a second. Uh, this chain should control the excessive amounts of events slightly without killing the node's damage effect. There you go. Okay. Twin Reaper. Increased the echo damage from 25 to 35%. That's kind of cool. That's pretty cool. So they fixed a bug that prevented the Technomancer's Twin Reaper PAX node from functioning properly after loading into a level. Oh, gee, thanks. That's awesome. Glad they fixed that. Um, in order to stimulate the Sniper Archetype presence, we are increasing the echo damage provided uh, by the Twin Reaper in order to support the fantasy of precision sniper shots being a deadly threat. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. So they reduced the cooldown of Kinetic Converter from, one, or from 5 seconds to 1 second. The healing path for Technomancers has been uh, has long been underrepresented, so we are increasing this pack's node's frequency to ensure the benefit for overhealing occurs more often and can more effectively be utilized in combat. Awesome. Uh, hasten Influence. Yeah, Hastened Influence increasing the cooldown uh, from 0.5 to 1 seconds. We feel the node didn't really hasten the Technomancers' influence over the enemies and are therefore giving it a boost. Winter is coming. <laughs> awesome. Uh, burrowing Charge reduced the cooldown from 5 seconds to 3 seconds. Burrowing Charge is performing well in terms of the numbers, so we're targeting the, uh, the occurrence rate to make it more fluent during hectic multi-enemy encounters. Awesome. Blight Fire. Okay, here's a, here's a good chunk. Fixed a bug that caused the Technomancer's Flame Leopard's Bright, or Bright Fire, Blight Fire set bonus to consume and trigger off of Toxic that had been applied by other players which in turn denied those players their application of Toxic. That's a good change. Fixed a bug that prevented Toxic Multiplier mods from correctly working when applied to pl Ooh, that's a huge change. <gasps> Dude, what? That's an... <laughs> oh, for YouTube, I can't say this word, but it was broken. We fixed it. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, these developers are fun. I like that. They Yeah, they fixed the... They fixed the bug that made it where toxic multipliers were not applying to Blightfire because technically they were two separate statuses. That's awesome. 
So the downpour legendary set increased the cluster scaling from 100% to 115 of anomaly power. They're increasing the cluster scaling uh, as compensation for some still vi uh, visible issues with the targeting. Travel time and detonation time of Scrapple. Mm, cool. So carbon footprint. They increased the cooldown reduction from 0.5 to 1 second, which I think that's a buff. That sounds good. Um, so the immobilized path on the pack tree or the pack skill tree is underrepresented. So we are increasing the cooldown reduction from weaving both immobilized skills to stimulate builds relying on the constant ash application. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Carbonization. Increase the damage multiplier from 20% to 25. The immobilized path in the pack uh, skill tree is underrepresented, so we are increasing the cooldown, blah, 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 blah. Uh, convection. Reduce the, the cooldown reduction from 4 seconds to 2 seconds. Convection launched in an undesired state with, impro with improper values. Uh, as a result of this, it has completely overshadowed uh, the arsonist path due to the positive feedback loop it generates. We are shifting its nature slightly to chip away the cooldowns instead of uh, the fully resetting them. Low cooldowns and skills on tap remain one of Outriders World Slayer's key tenants. But launch day convection went too far down this path. Okay, so what I'm assuming from this, is that a buff or a nerf? I, I honestly don't know how to read that. What I'm assuming from this, it sounds like a nerf. It sounds like they were, so the cooldown reduction of some skill was four seconds on activation or something like that and now it's only two seconds it is a nerf okay I, yeah i had a hard time reading that <laughs> had a hard time reading that nerf big that's a big nerf i guess it is a 50 percent nerf to the cooldown reduction so all you is that basically saying that all of you uh you eruption spammers aren't going to be able to spam eruption as much uh arsonist recool reduce the cooldown from five seconds to four seconds okay uh, so arsonist has been overshadowed by convection, which, uh, which fulfilled the former's role entirely in the short cooldown environment World Slayer introduced in order to make arsonist a more appealing option choice or choice. Uh, we are, we are trimming the convection and increasing the frequency of arsonist through the reduction of cooldowns. Increasing the percentage chance to proc would be counterproductive, uh, to the nodes na uh, nature and its maximum gain, which is refreshing as many, uh, skills as possible. Solar Flare increased their critical damage per stack from 10 to 15%. There you go. Similarly to the immobilized path struggles, the critical path was overshadowed by the bullet frenzy. We are increasing the crit damage multiplier to make it more appealing in competitive choices. Okay, cool. Critical Mass. Increased the duration from 2 seconds to 5 seconds. Uh, critical Mass was designed to, to be a baked-in Embalmer's Rage and was meant to, be, to offer a competitive choice to bullet frenzy, but this was not achieved at launch. We are providing more leeway to this node through its increased duration so that players can enjoy guaranteed crit shots for longer periods of time while also offsetting uh, offsetting troubles with scoring critical shots on beast enemies or very mobile humanoids. Okay. So yeah, you just have a longer time of getting uh, the guaranteed crits. Nice. Master Exploder. Reduced conversion rate from 100% to 50%. That's a, that's a big nerf. Uh, Master Exploder has been overperforming when combined with the amount of resistance piercing players are gathering from multiple sources. Master Exploder completely outshined Trigger Sequence. We are committing uh, to a power shift inside the branch, relaying or yeah, relaying power from Master Exploder into Trigger Sequence to make an Apex node an appealing choice. Uh, let's see, Backdraft reduce the anomaly power ramp per stack from 30% to 25. Okay, trigger sequence has been overshadowed by the value brought back or brought by backdraft. We are trimming a bit of power in backdraft and compensating trigger sequence in order to make it a more desired node. Okay, so a trigger sequence increase the damage ramp per stack from 25 to 35 percent. As stated in the master exploder notes, uh, trigger sequence has been overshadowed by a combination of the of an interim node and the coming hot or coming in hot node. While we do not want crew. Uh, while we do not want to curtail players freedom in or wow this is worded we, my brain is probably not on today while we do not want to curtail players freedom of selection which packs nodes they choose we do still strive to make apex nodes provide the highest benefits so that way so that using them feels worthwhile coolio increase the damage uh ramp per tick from 10 to 20 percent for burnt offerings 
So burnt offerings is ramping too slowly in the encounter pacing that uh, that emerged post launch. So we are expect or, uh, expediting it to make the node reach considerable amounts of damage with burnt offerings faster and more reliably. Cool. Uh, so wildfire slash conduction fixed a bug that prevented the wildfire and conduction power manager skill tree nodes from being effective if players were pushing the limits of their cooldown reduction. So the nodes were not working as intended and were being diminished by their global cooldown reduction cap, which is achieving uh, or is achieved rather than rather easily in Road Slayer. Awesome. So mark of the anomaly increased the damage against marked enemies from 10 to 12 percent. This is part of an overall change in which we are providing some extra power across all firepower builds in the base game's class tree. So yeah, they're pretty much, that's what I think they're trying to do with the Concussioner set for Devastator as well, is a lot of these changes are trying to bring back the firepower builds. So I'm assuming at some point in these notes, we are going to get to the section where Mage's Rage gets a huge nerf so you don't stack up like 12 million anomaly power. And then I'm assuming somewhere in here, Anomaly Enhancement will get a nerf as well. So you actually will have to make a legitimate firepower build instead of making an Anomaly Power build and then converting it over. Like, that's what this sounds like they're trying to do, is they understand that firepower builds have zero purpose when you can make a major Anomaly Power build and then just convert it over anyway. Uh, let's see, reduce the resistance reduction from 40% to 30%. Cool, cool, cool. In World Slayer, we introduced a seismic solution uh, to resistance reduction mods, but the susceptibility evaded that adjustment. We are uh, amending that in order to even out or even it out with mods such as Asunder. The reforged legendary set. Oh, okay. Increased thermal bomb damage from 100% to 200%. Holy crap increased feed the flames damage from 100 so they doubled feed the flames and thermal bomb damage holy poop holy crap dude uh so the niche that reforged was filling was overtaken with the introduction of the heat seeker set <laughs> yeah we are therefore looking uh into different di or looking to differentiate them by making reforged play around big thermal bombs in comparison to the many thermal bombs that heat seeker provides dude that sounds amazing yeah, big thermal bombs versus many thermal bombs. I want big thermal bombs. Additionally, this change is set uh, is or is another step in making Feed the Flames a competitive choice for anomaly power builds who want to play around single target and cleave profile. I'm actually down for that. I'm down for that. So the Torturer's legendary set increased the damage shared from 30 to 50 percent. Uh, similarly to the Marshall set, we want to make uh, niche sets excel in their designated environments. For the torturer set, the the torturer, the torturee, torturer set, uh, this is the cleave environment without letting them outperform or be outperformed by jack of all trades sets. Correct. Uh, this is gonna hurt my soul, isn't it? Balance changes to the trickster. Quantum entanglement increased the shared damage from twenty to thirty percent. Uh, Quantum Entanglement is currently competing with the Pain Transfer mod, and much to our dismay, it is consistently uh, loses the arms race. Cool. We are therefore increasing its value so it can uh, shine as the cleave node while also alleviating the overwhelming need to play with Time Rift. Ha! Huh. Coolio. Okay. Special Tactics. Increase the duration from 3 to 5 seconds. Which one was Special Tactics again? I forget what that node was. We are adding a bit of breathing room for players running special tactics when searching for new elites on the battlefield so they can keep stacking the ramp. Look at that, awesome. Increase the armor and resistance shred from 30 to 40%. Cool, oh, that's the that's the melee one. So you get 40% you get, uh, armor and resistance shredding instead of 30, that's fantastic. 10% uh, not a huge chunk, but I mean, it'll help. Uh, cheap Shot is greatly underrepresented, so we are adding duration and increasing the shred ca uh, capacity to allow players a bigger scoop, <laughs> scoop scope of debuffing enemies across the battlefield while also allowing the debuff to last longer without players having to get up close and personal every few seconds. That's fantastic, actually. That is awesome. I use that. I actually use Cheap Shot in my build, so that's fantastic. Um, spectral Spike. Cooldown reduction from 1 second to 0.5. Similarly to the Pyromancer's Burnt Offerings change, we are shortening the time for the Spectral Spike's ramp to reach its maximum potency. This should make the buildup more fluent in the Emergent World Slayer combat pacing. 
that was the one that you could get up to like 750% anomaly power. That should be interesting to try out now, I guess. Coolio. <gasps> Temporal Blade! The base cooldown reduced from 19.8 to 16.8. Yay! I can do more of those now. Look at that. Uh, we looked at anomaly builds which run on a singular damage source, Temporal Blade, and this change is a slight push to make it its combat loop more fluent throughout the fast or faster access to Temporal Blade. Yay! Yay! And that's just the base thing, too. So what's my Temporal Blade's cooldown going to be now? Uh, Wind Slash. Increase the base damage from 6.5 to 13? Holy crap! Cyclone Slice is having a hard time fitting into the World Slayer environment, so we're giving it a boost to base damage to make it more viable choice. Wow! They freaking doubled Cyclone Slice, or the mod Wind Slash, they doubled that damn. Wow! Holy crap! So, Slow Trap has its, uh, its cooldown reduced from 10 seconds to 8. Uh, this changes another step in making Slow Trap more portable for the dynamic playstyle that Trickster represents. Thank you. Uh, weapon damage bonus increased from 60% to 80%. Firepower tricksters are underperforming slightly in comparison to anomaly power tricksters. Yeah. So we are adding extra power into the set a bonus to uh, even it out with the Shield Beast set. Woo! 80%. So now we have the all class balance changes for these sets. So Maxwell Demon set. Fixed an issue with the set bonus only accounting for bonus firepower instead of total firepower. That's fantastic. Uh, the Maxwell's Demon set was drawing from only a par uh, part of the player's firepower, which was not the intended outcome. This fix increases the power of the bonus. Nice. Holy cr Whoa! Increase the firepower coefficient from 40% to 280%. That's a big bug for the, uh, or that's a big bug. That's a big buff for the, uh, the trigger twitch set. Wow. Fixed a bug that prevented the trigger twitch set from prioritizing, uh, targets properly. There you go. Tr uh, trigger twitch was launched with incorrect values, making the set severely underperforming. This is an adjustment to bring it to the intended power level. Wow. All right. We got to try the, uh, trigger twitch at some point. That's a lot of damage, man. Ooh, Mage's Rage. Here's the big one. Here's the big one. Fix the bug that was causing unforeseen issues with the amount of stacks and the anomaly power calculation. And then they fixed a bug that was preventing stacks from dropping away as intended when the player swapped weapons. Yep. So no more uh, shooting your secondary with Mage's Rage and then swapping to your main with like vulnerable bullets or something like that. None of those anymore. It'll, it'll drop the stacks whenever you switch weapons, and they fixed the uh, anomaly power calculations. Yep. Mage's Rage provided over twice of what it was supposed to uh, to give it, or yeah, what it was supposed to give in terms of anomaly power. This change sets the mod in the right place power-wise. Uh, while this change may feel significant for any player who were excessively relying on Mage's Rage, <coughs> every person in the community right now, our over uh, our overall balancing has ensured that not all that excess power has gone lost or has been lost. Rather, it has uh, flowed into other mods and combinations in order to provide a greater spread of viable builds. There you go. Uh, fixed a bug that caused the self medication mod to fully restore players' uh, health every time it was triggered. So rip all of you devastators who pushed Q and were full health. <laughs> Uh, increase the max HP provided by self-medication from 10 to 20% for every skill. Wow! That's awesome. That's actually really nice. That's a huge buff to self-medication. Yeah, this is a simple bug fix as the mod was clearly acting different to what its description said. The buff is made to compensate for uh, the output loss as a result of the bug fix. Wow. Wow. Okay, aha, uh -huh. ah, uh -huh. see? I knew something in here was going to happen. Reduce the conversion rate from 100% to 65% for no resistance against the fortified. Yeah. Yeah. All that, and so, uh, so, so, hey, people who's, who told me to stack armor piercing with no resistance against the fortified. How you feeling right now? <laughs> how you feeling? Uh, no resistance against the fortified, Naraf. Um, was launched with the unintentionally high value. 
However, after seeing how dominant it has since become in builds, we are only trimming some of its power instead of fully reverting it. This change should uh, should diminish the uh, the ease of exceeding 100% resistance, or the resistance piercing, which was the main cause of unintended, unfixable damage increases. Oh, hey, look at that dark sacrifice. Look at that. Uh, reduce the health drain from 50% to 25%, which is, that's, wow. That's a big, awesome change there. And increase the damage boost from 25% to 35%. So they're, they're pretty much trying to bring Dark Sacrifice back into the meta. <laughs> Especially with their focus on uh, firepower builds. Dark Sacrifice was hit too hard with the launch of World Slayer, so we are restoring some of its power while also reducing the amount of drain. Yes. Yes. They are they're trying to bring Dark Sacrifice back from the dead, which is fantastic. Uh, Killing Spree. Increase the damage boost per stack from 10% to 13%, which is actually pretty good. They nerfed it pretty hard. And then they increased the duration of from 8 to 15 seconds. Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah, similarly to Dark Sacrifice, Killing Spree was hit too hard with the launch of World Slayer, so we were restoring some of its power. It lost. Dude, look at that. Fortress. They increase the damage boost from 20 to 25% of maximum stacks. So they're trying to bring Fortress a little bit back into the thing. Yeah, they're restoring some of its offensive power previously lost. So the mod can keep up with other amplifier mods, blah, 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 blah. Awesome. So first things first. Yes, indeedy. I saw this one coming a mile away. They reduced the armor piercing value from 50% to 30%. Yep, yep. Uh, we previously increased the, the value on first things first, but this had led to the overbearing gameplay patterns of players intentionally not shooting guns at all. Uh, we tackled this to an extent when reworking Fortress last November. Uh, with that in mind, we have reduced the value of, of first things first to encourage more active game or gunplay. As we want players to go into combat thinking about what they're doing rather than what relying on stacks. Yeah, stat sticks and skill spam. <laughs> Don't you hate me in my stat sticks, okay? My Devastator loves my stat sticks. My guns only do like 50,000 damage a shot. <laughs> uh, tactical Retreat increased the base damage from 54 to 62. Oh, that's the... Oh, okay. I, okay, that's the one where you like roll and does a little orby thing. Uh, we are increasing damage of this mod to make it more competitive with golden standard mods like Thunder's Legacy. As Tactical Retreat requires additional planning and effort in uh, using the mod effectively, it should feel rewarding to rely on. Alright, Shock and Awe. Increasing the range from 5 meters to 10. And they fixed a bug that caused the Shock and Awe mod to trigger more often than intended. Alright, alright, so they're making the mod have more range to compete with better similar mods from the same category which do not require being struck by enemies. Alright, there you go. Embalmer's Rage. Reverted this mod back to being- Oh yeah, to being a kill shot mod rather than a critical shot mod. Okay, okay. So at launch of World Slayer, most skill shot mods uh, were converted to critical shot mods for a variety of reasons. Following community feedback and given the nature of Embalmer's Rage, it makes sense for this to return back to being a kill shot mod. Okay, so I noticed that they had moved most of them uh, from being instead of being like on kill shot or on hit or whatever. Now it's on crit. So now it's just if you kill something, you get guaranteed crits, which I think that's actually much better for Embalmer's Rage specifically. So nice. Anomaly power class nodes increase the anomaly power from 10 to 15 percent. As part of our compensation for power vacuum created... Ah, look at that! They used the term power vacuum! I said that the other day. By creating... Fig or created by... Li this is literally what I was talking about the other day. This guy must have been in my fucking stream. He must have been in my stream. This is literally what I worded it as. I was like, if you fix Mage's Rage, you are going to break a bunch of builds and create a power vacuum where nothing can survive because you now have nerfed the only option without buffing other options. That's exactly what I said. And here we have, as part of our compensation for the power vacuum created by fixing Mage's Rage, we are amplifying the class nodes to return part of the power lost. Thank you for thinking about this part of it, not just nerfing and cutting things in half. Uh, let's see. Increase the weapon damage value from 8% to 15%. This change is intended to bring firepower builds across all classes in line with anomaly power builds. Thank you. So, cool. Now we can actually have, you know, a reason to play firepower builds again. So that, that's the weapon damage class nodes increased. Uh, and then we got Toodles. Wow. That was a 
big section. That took me like over, that was almost an hour and a half to get through all these patch notes. Holy crap. Look at that. Look at all of the freaking changes here. Jesus. <laughs> That's so many. Holy crap. That's just the balance changes too. That's not even including the general fixes, which I am so excited to try out. All these different things. This is a good patch. This is a fantastic patch. All right, so that will do it for these ginormous patch notes. This was a very long video to make. This was a long effort of reading all of these and editing it down and everything. So again, if you guys made it to the end, thank you so much for watching. If you guys are new here, feel free to hit that subscribe button on your way out. Drop a like on the video because this took me freaking forever. And uh, comment on what your favorite change was, what your least favorite change was, how your build is handling this update. And again, a quick shout out to my lovely Patreon supporters over there. Uh, we have Spaded King and Hey Mr. Winston. Again, you two are freaking awesome. Thank you so much for all the support. As for everyone on the YouTube, thank you very much for over a thousand subscribers. We finally hit YouTube partner as well. So we are over a thousand subs. We have YouTube partner and you guys are freaking awesome. Thank you so much for all the support. You guys are fantastic. And all of the subs and bits and tips that I'm getting over on Twitch, you guys have been supporting me like crazy and I cannot thank you guys enough. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Bye, guys.